Hi there. It's Kathy at One Sweet Shop. I started working on a new type of journal this week. And I want to show you how it's done because this is probably one of the easiest journals I think I have ever done. Um, I've never made it before. It's a no-sew journal. Oh, my puppy dog is clicking away. It's a no-sew journal. <laughs> She's right there, right beside my feet. Um, and... Uh, Everything in this journal is tied so that it's removable at all times to do different things too. And I wanted to show you how it was made because I started making one and I had never made one before. And I thought, I started making one and I thought, this is just so cool. I really like this. It's fast. It was fairly easy to do. And uh, if you're starting out journal journaling or making journals and stuff, this is probably one of the easiest journals you could do other than one that's uh, sewed with a pamphlet stitch. So I put one together and I really, really liked it. Um, I won't show you that one. I'll, I'm gonna show you how to do it first. And what I used was these these uh, cardboard, book board, book plates. Now you can buy these, I do believe, probably at Michael's or, or at any hobby store, probably they're cardboard book plates. What I do is I um, buy uh, binders, you know, and binders are really super cheap at the start of the school year, or if you can find them in odd shops, you can get them fairly cheap, like a dollar or something. And I actually cut them down because I really like that stiff board. I, I don't like a journal that's too floppy on its covers. I like my covers to be really strong. And if I were to make this into a sewn journal, I would just make sure that I put all the holes in here first before I do all this covering. But... But this is how we're going to do it today. And what I was using was Mod Podge, actually, instead of a glue, to fix down the fabric. So what I would do is Mod Podge all this back area here. And I was doing a pretty even coat because I found that on the muslin, sometimes it'll seep through and change the color of the muslin. And it seems like this uh, muslin that I bought was very thin. Thinner than normal, I, I, I'm i thinking, because I can remember muslin being fairly thick. But I bought it at Walmart, and it seemed to be very thin. So what I did is I coated my backboard first, and I laid them all down, and I made sure that I had some, some room on this edge, because eventually I'm going to fold this edge over, right? And then I did the same for the, what is going to be the spine of the book. I covered it with the Mod Podge, and I laid it down, and I made sure I had a space here. You have to have a space here because you're going to want to fold that book up. And see how that space disappears once I fold it? Because you need at least the space of these books here, these book uh, covers. So about um, two millimeters or so, maybe a little better. And the same with this one. I put the Mod Podge on here. I laid it down. Now, what I did with the Mod Podge, where did my roller go? I'm not sure where I even put it. <laughs> I use a roller, and it's actually a Bray roller. I think it's called a Bray roller. Let's see if I can hunt it down here. I just had it. I was using it, but I don't remember where. But anyway, I use a Bray roller. I flip these all over like this, and I make sure that I roll it down nice and flat so that there's no wrinkles, especially if I have an iron that fabric. I kind of want it to be flat, like I have a thing. I want I want my fabric on my cover to be flat. Oh, here it is here. This is what a braid roller is. And this is what I use. And I do it so that the Mod Podge gets right in there into the fabric and holds everything nice and solid. And I'll show you a couple of the book covers that I did that are colored and it doesn't bother so much on the Mod Podge. So once I had that, then I ended up having, and I'll show you here, I ended up having this. This is a set of ones that I did that are glued down with a Mod Podge. So it's all coated there. It's good and strong. It's stuck there. It's really good. Now, the next step to this is to um, fold this all over the sides. Now, some people like to take the corners there and fold the corners in to get that little point there. But I don't like to do that because I don't like all the bulk that this stuff over here makes. Especially if I'm going to be putting another plate of paper here to cover up this, this 
box board stuff. So what I usually do is I take, and let me see if I can show you here. I cut my corners. Let's see if I can get this here. I cut my corners like yay, just like that. So that when I do take the Mod Podge to this and glue it down, I have a corner like that and a corner like that. And so it just leaves this tiny little bit right there. And that doesn't really bother me much. So this one too, I'll take this one and I'll just trim this one down here like this, like that. And this is, this is how you get those nice little corners there. And I'm gonna be putting those little book, um, here it is here. One of these little book corner plates on. I bought these from Amazon. I got a whole bunch of them for like $10 or something. That's what's going to go onto those corners. So it doesn't really bother me that those corners aren't going to be covered with fabric because you're not going to see them at all when they're done. Just trim that one a little bit. Now I was going to glue this, but I do have one that's already glued. So I think I'm going to use that instead. It's going to save us some time. But if I was to glue this, I'd be taking my Mod Podge, I'd be putting it here, or Mod Podge, I always say Mod Podge, um, and I would be pushing that down and making sure that it's nice and tight when I do put it on. Just so that I have those nice little corners and they're good. It's okay if there's a little space, you're gonna have that little book plate corner here, that little corner plate in there. This will be downloaded like that. So I do have one that's done. I'm going to show you it. Move that one over. And so then we got to a point where this is what it looked like. So now I have all of my corners done. I have it on the front and the back. I used the Mod Podge. Now it did discolor me a little bit. And I think it's where I used too much Mod Podge on those areas. But that's okay too because most of it's going to be covered. Now, I'm going to make a plate here. Hmm, let me see. I'm going to have this covered with something. There'll be something here on the front and the side. So what I want to do is make sure I cover up this area and make sure that it is sealed down. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to put that on because I don't have one with just that on, do I? No, I don't. I thought I had one book with just this, uh, just a little bit of Mod Podge on it, but I guess not. I'm going to put the Mod Podge here, and I'm going to coat it all over, because I want to cover up that center spine and uh, make sure it's sealed down. And it's just going to overlap this a little bit. I don't have to put too much on. Um, it's just to make it super sticky. It'll stay down and uh, it'll look nice once the signatures are in because our signatures are going to float through the center here. So we'll put that on like that. And let's see, did I get that even? Nope, I want to get it over here a little bit more. I want to try to get it as even as possible so both sides have some. And maybe a little bit up there. Now this is going to dry. It's going to take a little bit of time to dry, but at least it's in there. It's good. I'm going to show you the next step and we're still going to use some Mod Podge. So now to make these tie books, I think I want to, I have to decide now what I want to use as a closure. Like, am I going to make a little loop closure or what am I going to do with this? And I've decided that I'm just going to make a tie closure. So I'm going to half up a little piece of muslin here. And I'm going to make sure that I add my tie now because I want the book pages that are going to cover here to cover it up and hide it afterwards. Oh, I got a little stray here. Let me get that off there. It'll leave a lump. So let me do that. And let me put a little bit of Mod Podge. I'm going to use Mod Podge again. And I'm going to put it right here. And it's going to, it's going to cover... And yeah, I'm not being all that neat, but it gets it in there. It'll be okay in the end. So, so let's put that there and like almost center. I'm not measuring. 
because I'm just not that particular. If it's a bow, it's a bow in the end. It'll look nice. Might need a little bit more here. There we go. Once that dries and stiffens up, I think it'll be okay. Are they pretty much? Yeah, they're pretty much even. This one could be a little higher, maybe. I'll move it up. There we go. Okay, I'm going to seal that up. And somewhere here I have a cup of something to put my brush in. I'm not going to be using any more Mod Podge, so. There we go. All right. So now we're at a point. Oh, there that thing went. Oh, to space. Now there's not too much Mod Podge sticky in here. It's getting dry. So what I'm going to do is show you what I do with, where is all my, there they are. I uh, pre-ripped a whole bunch of these ties. Now I know that this book is probably going to have, I think, six signatures. I think I want to put six signatures in here. And I think I'm going to cut it, so I don't know if there's going to be a lot of leftovers. But you know what? We're going to pretend that there is going to be a lot of leftovers. So I'm going to take and start tying my signatures. I kind of don't like to waste this much muslin, but it's okay. And I generally pull it as tight as I can on there. I think it usually works better if I tie it down here, but that's okay. I'm going to tie it as tight as I can, and I'm going to tie it in a knot. So there's one there. Now, that's a long tail. I probably could have cut these a lot shorter, but just for sake, I'm, this is what the size of my muslin was that I ripped, so I'm going to use them. And pull off these extra threads, which I seem to have a lot of. So here's another one. So I'm going to go back to this side. Now you want to have those here. Now this one's here, probably going to be on this side. It'll be fine. Do you see how it has some movement there? Oh, I've got lots of little things hanging here. Flip that one over there. There we go. Let's try this one here. Nice and tight. Okay, so you kind of get the picture of what you're doing. You're tying these muslin pieces, and, and this is going to act as if you're sewing your signatures in. This is what's going to hold your signatures right in here. And you're going to be sliding your signatures in here. Now, I've got one that I've got all six in already, so I'm going to put this one off to the side. I made quite a few of these books, actually, this week because I was thinking, gee, I'd love to do a tutorial on that because they were turning out so good. I just love them. I have a lot of strays. And yeah, we, we all love little strays here and there, but I'll use these when I make a snippet roll or something. Stuff them in there. So this book here, I've done all those steps. I've done the adding it to the board here. I've done that band across here to hold that center spine. I've done my ties. And I've already done the six, the six ties on here. And this one, actually, I did them shorter. So I cut these ones off. I cut them on an angle. And I'm not sure if I'm going to maybe put a bead on these to, to add color to the, to the cover. Or whether I'm going to take and do something with sewing and tie them down here. I might do that. Just because I think I want these ones to lay flat. But I'm not sure yet. I've left it. So what we're going to do now is I've gotten past that and I have some uh, printables from the Gingerbread Prints and I absolutely love her printables and that is what I'm going to actually use in this book. So I'm going to show you what I have that I made. So each one of these ties here are going to hold a signature. This was my front cover. So this one here is what I want to put on the front here. And it's going to have that very shabby look. 
I'm going to add um, probably some mint colored leaves and flowers, maybe a couple little butterflies or something. I haven't quite decided on the cover yet, but that is going to be my cover when it's done. Where did I put my book plate? I did make a book plate for it. And I stuffed it somewhere in here. It was very thick, so I was gluing pieces together on it, but I will find it after. And these ones here are the ones that I decided are going to go on the inside of the journal here. So I don't have a lot of fabric tack left, but I'm going to use what I do have here. Hopefully I can get it to come out of this bottle. It's been giving me trouble all day. But I'll have to go run out and get some more today before the stores close. Just because I have 12 of these journals to put together and I'm not sure if I can get this even out of the bottle. This stuff dries so fast. I just had this open. This stuff dries so fast, I'll tell ya. And I didn't um, distress the edges. I put this, um, the print, onto a, like a manila, like a file folder type stuff. And I didn't distress it because what happens is it gets wet and it starts to leak off. And I didn't want that on my muslin. So I made sure not to distress the final edge. There's a there's a beige edge on the outside of this. Okay, so let's flip this one over. And this one's going to go right in here. I want it. And the little book, the little book clips on the corners are going to fit in there too. I'm going to use my little roller. Just to roll the edges down and make sure that fabric tack sticks in there. This stuff is really sticky stuff. I wish I could get something a little different, but there doesn't seem to be much selection around. So I did shade, I did uh, distress the print side of this. And then when I put it on the, on this card in the back, I didn't do any distressing on this edge because I didn't want it to leak down here. I didn't want to have a brown edge around here. Sometimes that happens, so... And I wasn't sure if I wanted to put lace there or not. I'm going to do some more here. Looks like I do need to go get another bottle of this today. This stuff's quite expensive. It's like $18 a bottle. And if you can keep it from drying out on you before you're using it, you know, great. But otherwise, you get these big oodles of poodles of stuff sloshing out of the lids of them. And it doesn't want to... This one really is hard. It's getting there. It must be, the bottle must have some hard pieces in it, maybe. I just want to get enough on there to make it stay down here. I guess I should have got out my two-way tape. Oh. As long as I've got it along the edges, it might be okay. That's already hardening. I don't know, what, what, kind of, what is the best kind of glue you guys use? because sometimes this stuff is not the best. Oh, well, there we go. I have to be Hercules to squeeze this bottle. And I'm not quite that strong. Oh, I'm gonna put the lid on before it dries out in two seconds. And then I'm gonna stick this one right in here. I'll probably have to add little dots here and there. And I'm gonna roll that one down too, just to hold it in place. That glue is pretty good. I did find some at the Dollar Tree, and it was called um, hmm, High Tack. I think it was called High Tack. And um, it was also the same type of glue. It was fantastic, but I would use up a whole bottle on one book. So, and But that's okay. It was Dollar Tree, right? And um, it was not uh, water-soluble. So it when it stuck, it stuck really well. It was not coming off. So... That was really, really good. I think I might put this one upside down. Oh my lord, I think I did. Actually, uh, let's, uh, let's, can I fix this then? Can I flip it? You betcha I can. I better do that. Because <laughs> I'm seeing the error of my ways. There, now they're both upside down and I will flip the book around instead. Sounds good to me. Okay get that back down there. 
things like that happen when you're not thinking about how things are sitting. Perfect. Okay, we got it in there and it'll be okay. Perfect. Now, let me see. I do have a container with the, well, I will get this one down here. I'm going to show you what that's going to look. There's a little space there, right? But once I put this on here, that's going to cover up a lot of that space once I crimp it all down. And I think I'll use the gold ones on here. Now, the next, if I can get this Fabri-Tac to work here, I should have went and bought another bottle. Somewhere here. This is going to be my little cover. My little cover. See, these now will have to go down in the other direction. But that's okay, too. I can do that. That's pretty easy to do. Pull them down here and tuck them in. Yep. I had them all going up because I was going to sew them in a V. But they're all going to be going down now. Okay. If I can get that Fabri-Tac to work, I'm going to put some of that under here. But I was wondering if I should put some lace in there. This one does have some inking, so that does concern me. I might have to put it onto one more piece of cardstock that isn't inked first and then put it in. Unless I can go far enough from the edge here. I might be able to do that. Let's check it out and see. I want to show you these signatures before the video ends. Okay, I'm going to see if I can squeeze some of this out of here because this stuff is so hard. It's dried already on the nib. Let's see if I can get enough of it out of there to do something with. Wow. Hey, you know what? I'm going to use something else because this is just not driving well with me today. Let's see what else I've got. Um, smear that down. I want a lump there. Look at how that just rolls off. That one must be getting too dry. It must be. Okay. So, I'm going to use this instead. Lord, I hope it holds. If not, I'll be fixing this. I'm just going to squirt some glue on here. This is like um, an adhesive for gemstones and things. So I'm going to just smear this around. I want it to cover this whole piece. I would have rather have had the Fabri-Tac. But if it doesn't hold, I can rip it off later and redo it. So, good thing I have lots of printables. Okay, I don't want it anywhere near the edges. But, I'm going to put it here. Right in here. And that's where I want it to be because I want it to... Um, I want it to have a pocket there. So I'm going to go like this and push this down. I've got a little bit of a space here. I might take and sew and pull that in. So we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to put some weight on this later. So it'll be all right in the end. It'll have it all fastened down. Now I wanted to show you the signatures. Now this is from the Gingerbread Prince. And I've already put these signatures together. I've picked the pages and these journals here fit the regular copy paper, paper size paper. And what I did is I just printed um, one print with the design and one with the background paper on it. And then I added in some of my copy dye paper that I do with lace. I make lace copy dye paper. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm probably going to swap some of these out for a few plain pages. It'll probably be like one and one when I'm done and then it's got another print in here all of these have six pages each signature has six pages and they're absolutely 
The prints are breathtaking. They're beautiful. They're so beautiful. Uh, I could have made a better choice on some of them because some of them I can see my, my, my behind print and I should have done it on its own page. This was a very dark one, so it kind of showed up. But that's okay because I'll put some lace or something in there and it'll be fine. Now, I decided that this is the first one I wanted to have. And what I ended up doing is I ended up making sure that I put um, one of the printed pages in the middle of some of these. Just so that I can take and either put a whole piece of lace here or put two pockets or something in the center. So I've decided that this one here is going to be my starting, my starting signature. And all we do is slide them on in. Oh, I guess I should get it straight first. There. Slide it all in. Now I have those six, uh, those six muslin bands, and they're fairly tight, so they hold it in place. You don't have to tie it in if you choose to sew your journals together. That's totally fine too. I just chose to do it this way because I've never done one like this, and I really wanted to see what it was like. And I decided that I really like it. I made some of these, well, it wasn't really these, but I made something like this a few years back, and I didn't like it at all. Um, I used like a twine or something to tie them. I didn't like it. And so I watched this video on YouTube that showed me this method with the muslin, and I thought, oh, I love the muslin. So I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it again, and I'm going to see how it goes. And I actually love it. They all sit in here perfectly. It looks so very shabby. Um, these prints from uh, the Gingerbread Prints are beautiful. Each signature complements the next, which is nice. And, uh, oh, I made a few things also to put in here. Different little, different little things I made for pockets. I do have some more prints yet, I'll show you. With this here, this little pocket, that could probably even go in there. Or I can glue it to a page so it can hold. Glue it to a page here. Or, the, the thing that's nice about these is that you can pull the page out and you can sew this in. And then you can stick the page back into the journal. And I really like that because lots of times I've gotten to a point where I looked at a page and went, oh, I wish I had added some lace, but oh, it's sewed in now. It's so hard to put in the sewing machine. This one here, if I want to just put lace on this one page, I can pull that one page out. I can sew the lace on and I can tuck it back in. Or a hanky or a doily. So this one isn't decorated yet. This is what she's turning out to look like. Let's put her in here. Huh? I have my little strays here that I'm going to deal with. I'll put something pretty. I think I might even put pink buttons on there. I'm not sure yet. I have my tie here. I can cut this off smaller if I want. Or I can leave it so I can tie a large bow. Just a large bow there. And uh, leave it hanging down. Very shabby looking. I love the muslin. I'm going to show you some of the other prints. So this is actually sitting down pretty good now. I'm going to put some clips on here after, as soon as I'm done the video, so it'll hold it better. But look at how this lay is so beautiful there. And these prints are so gorgeous, along with the coffee dye. I absolutely love it. So this is some more of her, um, the gingerbread prints. This is some more of the decorating elements that she had in her in her kit, the pink journal kit. And I'm going, I have printed these all out, so I'm gonna start cutting them out and inking all the edges and stuff. And hopefully in my next video, maybe I'll have some pockets in this journal. This one here I inked already. So I printed them on white paper. I should have actually done it on ivory, maybe. Would have been a better idea, but next time. I'm gonna make some pockets in here. I wanna make one here. Maybe put some lace. I might want to put some lace here. And I'm going to start decorating some of the pages with some of these some of these different elements that are in her kit. And I love this. I'm not sure what I want to do with this yet. 
I might actually take um, like a gold thread or a brown thread and I might actually wind this around so it kind of looks like um, well, I used to see things in people's hair where they're wound with um, strings and things and they're beautiful and I might do that with those just to add a different element to it and then hang some little dangles or something. There's two pockets in here. And I, I learned how to do these from um, Treasure Books. Treasure Books had some of these. And I think it was another, that other pocket I made was also something that she had made at Treasure Books. So I use a little bit of things from everyone. A little bit of uh, their ideas. And once this is filled, I'll show you what it looks like. And we'll do like a little show and tell flip through. And so I hope you enjoy watching my video. Look at how beautiful that is. Everything is so nice and even. I'll decorate up the cover a little more. I might even decorate the back with a book plate too. I'll see what I decide. I'm not sure if I'm going to add the lace or not. Or maybe I'll just leave it without lace. I'm not quite sure. So, But uh, when you see it in the end, you'll, you'll see what I've done to it. So... Thanks for watching my video, and hopefully this inspires you to make your own Tide journal. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple other ones, because when I make journals, I never make one. I have to do more than one. So where did I put them? Here they are. So, of course, I started putting together about 12 of these journals. So I have those ones that are in various states, and then I started making some with some this is all the muslin too i'm going to make some that have a print from a different company so i'll show you that when i put it together this one here was christmas birds i got this print at a walmart so oh, it's upside down now let's flip her there and then that's going to be that center piece that goes inside there so it matches and this is going to be a christmas journal these are little birds with christmas things on them so that's going to be a Christmas journal. Here's another beige one, a uh, muslin one. This one here is also a Christmas journal. So this is going to be really cute. This one actually has a lot of spots. And I did that because there's probably only going to be four or five signatures. But I wanted to use more lace in this one. So I want to decorate it up real Christmassy. And I have a panel of... Um, of a little strip there that's going to go in the center of this one too there it is that one will go in there and then i'll put either green on the outside here or red i'll do something that's holiday and then here is another one and this one's going to be a, a christmas journal but it's going to be a different print because i bought blue and pink christmas and i want to really try that out on a journal so this one's going to be covered in blue and pink in the end and what else do I have? I have two more down there in various states. And then, of course, I've got all my copy paper ready to go to decorate something. So, thank you for watching. And um, I hope to see you again. And I hope I didn't bump that camera too much. It's kind of crazy. But um, I hope you enjoy yourself making your own journal. Have a good day. Bye-bye.